classic study of public attitudes toward radio reveals that the basic needs for information, pleasure, relaxation, and companionship of 96% of all adults are satisfied by radio. Advertisers like Jim Webb of the A-Webb Lock Safe and Alarm Company are finding this to be an excellent environment in which to present their advertising message. Jim advertises on the Al Carroll Show, Saturdays and Sundays, and Jim Fields, well, let's let Jim tell it. We advertise with Al Carroll on his Super Handyman Show, and I believe the audience of the Super Handyman Show must enjoy Al's commercials because we've had good response. So I believe that probably advertising with Al Carroll and WFAA uh, pays in the long run. That's the voice of one of many advertisers who have tried radio advertising and enjoyed its results. Results, after all, are what it's all about. WFAA Radio, the personal medium. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. Aren't you just a little bit curious to know whose spirit haunts this house? All right. Who is the ghost? It's you, Lydia. Your spirit haunts this house. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. You can rent almost anything. Electric tools, exercise equipment, party supplies, tools for gardening, building, even earth-moving equipment. Why buy when you can rent? You can rent anything, almost. This commercial is brought to you by Tarrant Dallas County Renters Association. And we would like to remind you that spring is once again upon us and you can rent those tools you'll be needing. Why purchase when you can rent at a very nominal cost? No maintenance, storage, or repairs to worry about. To find a rental service near you, look in the yellow pages. They are full of surprises. This is Vincent Price. Our story begins in New York City, that mecca of delight and terror. It is early November, less than three weeks before Thanksgiving. A young woman, very pretty, is walking along Lexington Avenue carrying a shopping bag. Her buoyant stride and radiant face suggest she has just bought a new dress. She seems oblivious to her surroundings, as carefree as if she were strolling through a meadow on a fine spring day. She approaches 49th Street. Looking straight ahead, she begins to cross against the light. woman is suddenly struck down, her reverie of a moment before shattered like a glass figurine under the wheels of a taxi cab. Oh, my God, a woman! She walked right in front of that cab. I saw her. Is she hurt? Hey, is she dead? Don't move her. Don't move her. Somebody call an ambulance. Lady, why do you step off of the curb? Oh, jeez. Ah, she don't look good. She ain't moving. Accidents are not unusual in New York. Hundreds happen every day. Yet this one, as we shall discover, is different. It is just the beginning of a mysterious series of events. Events that will be felt, but perhaps never explained or understood. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Going Home, by Anne Heath. Our stars, Anne Given and Jack Crucian. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops.
Our family is growing pretty big these days. We've got family members in nine different states. And Sears sure comes in handy. We can select gifts at the Sears near us, then bring them along on visits to our daughter in Seattle and my brother in Miami. And if what we bought isn't just right for them, they go to the Sears near them and exchange it. That's Sears. In their stores or through the catalog, Sears is where America shops. Sears, 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 where America shops. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut. Even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. From Sears, fashion that thins off the storm, salutes the sunshine. Step out, military flair. These double-breasted trench coats get down to details. Choose olive green or khaki tan jacron polyester and cotton, sizes 8 to 18. Another fashion winner, the new quilt trim sheared shoulder coat with self-belt. In chino beige polyester and cotton, sizes 6 to 16. Both coats come with a nylon lining. Fashion that stems off the storm, salutes the sunshine. In the coat department at most larger Sears retail stores. A fateful accident has plunged a young woman's daydream into nightmare. Is it the real world into which she now awakens? Or does reality lie instead on the other side of consciousness? Who are you? I am a doctor, Miss Stevens. You're in a hospital. Hospital? How did I get... What happened? Well, you've had an accident. Don't try to talk now. An accident? But I don't remember any accident. The last thing I remember, I was walking down the street. Lexington, I think it was. And and I had a package. Yes, I remember now... It was a dress. I just bought that lavender dress. Don't tire yourself, my dear. What you need now is sleep. Plenty of time later to think about what happened. But, Doctor, I can't remember anything. Shh, I... shh, 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 shh. You're a very lucky young lady. It's a miracle you weren't killed. Killed? Yes, my dear. By rights, you should be dead. And <laughs> dead people don't talk, so be a good girl and go to sleep. I'll check in on you later. hospital lasted almost two weeks, but it seemed like a lifetime. Although my memory gradually returned, I still couldn't recall the accident itself. The mind has been known to block out traumatic events. Perhaps it was this defense mechanism that was working within me. Finally, I was released and allowed to return home to my apartment. The day after my return, I received a telephone call from someone whose voice I didn't recognize. Is this the lovely Lydia? Who is this? I'm so glad I've reached you at last, Lydia. I've been phoning for days. You never seem to be in. I've been a away. <laughs> Please, who is this? Well, you don't know me. At least we've never met. But do you remember the old farmhouse on Deerfield Road in Cornwall? Why, yes. That's where I spent summers as a child. But how do you know the house? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Alexander Pluto, but my friends call me Alex. I bought the house two years ago from that farmer, um... What was his name? R Riska. Yes, Bill Riska. He bought the farm from my father. He was going to give it to his son when he was old enough to farm it himself. Well, apparently the boy decided he didn't want to be a farmer. The old man seemed relieved to be rid of the place. Almost as happy as I was to find it. You see, I'm a sculptor. And I've been searching for just the right place to work. The farmhouse would be too remote for most people. I'm sure you remember. The nearest neighbor is three miles down the road. Then it hasn't changed. Not in the least. I'm glad to hear that, Mr... Pluto. Oh, but please, call me Alex. Yes, well, I... I've often wondered what became of the place. I'm not surprised Billy didn't want to stay in the sticks. He was kind of a wild kid. It's good to know the house belongs to someone who cares for it. 
Well, it was very thoughtful of you to call and tell That's me... That's not quite the reason I called. Oh? I don't suppose you believe in spirits. You mean ghosts? I have never liked that word. It makes me think of hobgoblins and Halloween and Casper, that ridiculous little cartoon character. No. What I'm referring to is the spirit, or presence, if you will, of an actual person. You see, there's one living in this house. <sighs> Mr. Pluto. Alex. I really haven't time for ghost stories today. It's been nice talking with you, but I must go now. Aren't you just a little bit curious to know whose spirit haunts this house? All right. Who is the ghost? It's you, Lydia. Your spirit haunts this house. What are you saying? At first, it was just a feeling. You know, like when you sense there's someone in the room with you. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Then you began to appear to me in a more human form. Human form? Oh, Lydia, you are lovely. Your face, so innocent. Your body, such form. Such grace. Classic. Like a marvelous Greek statue. And you have the most exquisite porcelain white shoulders. Me? I don't really have a... What am I saying? This is insane. Listen, I'm sure you didn't call just to upset me. If this is some kind of joke, it's not very funny. I assure you, it's no joke. What you're saying is absurd. Even if there were such thing as ghosts or spirits, as you call them, and only a child would believe that, mine couldn't possibly be haunting your house. It's impossible, Mr. Pluto, because I'm not dead. To look the height of fashion wherever I go requires many coats. But for home, I need only one coat fashion surrounding me. Sears Best Easy Living Interior Paint. One coat of easy living on the walls and every room looks stunning. Save $3 on every gallon. Choose from 25 decorator colors in easy living latex flat and semi-gloss. Plus bright white ceiling paint for your home. Because with Sears Easy Living Paint, it's one coat when used as directed. At most Sears retail stores, sale ends March 24th. Sears has a bedspread with all the muscle to resist the wear and tear it gets from high-spirited kids. It's Tough Cord, a sturdy blend of 75% polyester and 25% rayon. Choose from bunk twin and full sizes in 10 bright solid colors or five coordinating plaids. All machine washable and permapressed for no fuss, easy care. When you want value in a strong and sturdy bedspread, look for Tough Cord. Because kids not only sleep in their bedrooms, they play there too. At most Sears retail stores. Understand you type fast. Yes. Accurate? Well... That's okay. You'll be typing on Sears' exclusive corrector electric typewriter with easy correction and more. It's Sears' best. Try typing Sears' corrector typewriter. Whoops. Now, first, Sears is S-E-A-R-S, -S, not Z. So, backspace to the incorrect letter. Tap the correction key. Now the mistake is blocked out. Next, type the correct letter. Then proceed. Yes, Daddy. Listen, I'm sure you didn't call just to upset me. If this is some kind of joke, it's not very funny. I assure you, it's no joke. What you're saying is absurd. Even if there were such thing as ghosts or spirits, as you call them, and only a child would believe that, mine couldn't possibly be haunting your house. It's impossible, Mr. Pluto, because I'm not dead. I see you every afternoon, Lydia, in your straw hat with the red ribbon. Riding down the road in your little cart behind your pony, Ebony. But how could you know that? It was almost 20 years ago. I was only 10. And Ebony, how did you know my pony's name? I know all about you, Lydia. are known to be eccentric, but even allowing for artistic temperament, Alexander Pluto seemed an unusually odd sort of man. There was something about his voice. It gave me an eerie feeling, and 
I couldn't stop thinking about the strange things he'd said. How did he know so much about me? And what was it he wanted? The next day, he phoned again. And again the following day. Hello? Hello, Lydia. Why do you keep calling me? What do you want? All I want is for you to come home. What do you mean? I am home. This is where I live. No, Lydia. I mean home to the farmhouse. You can't be serious. Look, Mr. Pluto, that's your home now, not mine. Yes, it is mine. And yours. You belong here. You must come home. I'm hanging up. Please don't call me again. Good morning, Miss Stevens. Haven't seen you lately. Been away? Uh, no, I've been... Yeah, yes, I've been away. I'd like you to fill a prescription for me. Sure thing. Be glad to. Let's see what we've got here. Hmm? Tranquilizers, hmm? Yes, I, I haven't been sleeping well. Oh, that's a common ailment in this city. I'd say half the people that come in here are looking for a way to get a good night's rest. W will it take long? What? The prescription. Will it take long? I'm kind of in a hurry. No, 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 no. It won't take but a minute. I'll just type this up for you. So, you managed to get away, hmm? Away? Yes, away from our fair city, your trip. Oh, yes. Where'd you go, the Bahamas? No, I went to visit a friend in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? No, that's not my idea of a vacation. No, if we could afford it, me and the missus, we'd go to those Bahamas. Plenty of sunshine, miles and miles of white powdery beaches. Uh, please, I really am in a hurry. Oh, sorry. I guess I got carried away. It's just that it's kind of a dream of ours. Someday... Oh, forgive me for saying this, but you don't seem quite yourself. Is something troubling you? No. No, of course not. It's the lack of sleep. It makes me a little tense, that's all. Are you sure that's all it is? Yes, of course I'm sure. All right. Here are your pills, Miss Stevens. Shall I put this on your account? Yes, thank you. You'd better take one of those right away and calm those nerves of yours. You'd think somebody was after you or something. <laughs> the druggist meant well, but I just couldn't take his chatter or his prying. I had to get back to the solitude of my apartment, where I'd be safe from questions I couldn't answer. Oh, where's that blasted key? I'm coming, I'm coming! Ah, oh, here it is. Hello? Hello, Lydia. Oh, no. Don't say that. Not when I've come all this way. What? Yes, I'm in the city. I've been following you. You follow... When? Just now. I followed you when you went to the drugstore. Oh, my God. You have lovely legs, Lydia. Listen, you've got to stop this. If you don't stop bothering me, I'll call the police. But I mean you no harm. I only want... What? What do you want? I just want you to come home with me. No, I've told you no. Please, please go away and leave me alone. Oh. A week went by and I heard nothing more from Alexander Pluto. No phone calls, nothing. Maybe he'd finally given up. One morning I was talking on the phone to Sheila, my closest and dearest friend. Well, I think, I think you should call the police, just in case he's still hanging around. No, they'd think I was crazy. Just another neurotic female who's scared of her own shadow. You have to get killed before the cops will help you. Oh, Lydia, don't be so cynical. I do wish you'd report this guy. Most nuts are harmless, but, well, you never know. If you don't want to call the police, I'll do it for you. No, please, Sheila. I want to put all that behind me. I want to forget. I've been like a prisoner in this apartment... It's time I got out and back to work. I want to feel like a normal person again. Oh, it's good to hear you talk like that. But I still wish... Sheila, you... please. All right, all right. Can we get together for lunch soon? I'd love to. How about Wednesday? Wednesday. Let me think. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Let's go to that little omelet place where we always... Hold on a sec, Sheila. There's someone at the door. It's probably the boy for groceries. It's you. <laughs> 
before me was an angular man with graying hair, dressed in a worn cardigan and corduroy trousers. His intense slate blue eyes seemed to penetrate right through me, holding me transfixed, unable to speak or to move. Hello, Lydia. I've come to take you home. Lydia? Lydia, where are you? Lydia? Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. When you're looking for the dog food used by most professional dog owners and breeders, you're looking for Wayne dog food. The minimum protein levels in Wayne dog food are higher than most other dog foods. Because of this, you get an excellent protein balanced dog food. Now this, combined with a competitive price, makes Wayne's the best dog food for your money. You can't find Wayne dog food at the grocery store, but Wayne's can be found at the Aggie Feed Store. That's the Aggie Feed Store, the largest feed store in the Southwest. They're on Highway 175. Going east out of Dallas, take the first exit after Loop 12. Then follow the service road to Aggie Feed Store. In Mesquite, it's Ace Hardware and Feed at 4413 Gus Thomason. Remember Wayne Dog Food, the dog food used by most professional dog owners and breeders, now at competitive prices at the Aggie Feed Store, the largest feed store in the Southwest, on Highway 175, east of Dallas. Want to know the best way to better a lawn? Well, if the grass is always greener on your neighbor's side of the fence, it's probably because he uses Best Lawn Food, the balanced fertilizer for greener, healthier lawns. Best Lawn Food contains an effective combination of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash to promote early growth. And its exclusive zip polyphosphate formula means more available phosphorus over longer periods of time, resulting in a stronger root system and greener, healthier grass. On the other hand, if the grass is always weedier on your side of the fence, you can knock out those weeds and feed your lawn at the same time with Best Weed and Feed. It has the zip polyphosphate formula, but it also contains Trimec for effective weed control. You can do two jobs in one application. And speaking of best, now you can have the best T-shirt in town. Bright, glamorous, full-color best T-shirts will be on sale at the Best Lawn and Gardens product booth at WFAA Spring Thing in the Women's Building at Fair Park, April 6th, 7th, and 8th. See you there. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Hush, hush, my darling. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the night. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world. And I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. So Lydia has at last come face to face with the voice on the telephone. Drawn by some unknown force as powerful as love itself, she's compelled to go with this stranger. What is the power he has over her? And where is this place he calls home? Where are we going? Uh, Don't be afraid, Lydia. I'm an excellent driver. You! How did I get here? I came for you. But I I don't remember. There's nothing to remember. All that matters is that you're here now. Where are you taking me? I told you, Lydia. I'm taking you home. You mean we're going to Cornwall, to the farmhouse? That's right. Oh. There's nothing to be afraid of. I assure you, Lydia, I won't harm you. Now, it's a long drive, so why not just sit back and relax? There's plenty of time for a nap if you'd like. There's a pillow on the back seat. I'm not tired. As you wish. I just want you to be comfortable. Comfortable? Is this your idea of comfort? 
First you terrorized me on the phone for days, and now you, you kidnap me. If you don't intend to harm me, then what do you want with me? Nothing more than what I've already told you. You must trust me. Trust you? Yes. Everything's going to be fine. Just fine. Everything would be fine. How I wished I could believe that. I tried to make sense of what was happening, but my head was clouded with fear. Sheila was right. I should have called the police. Are you warm enough, Lydia? This heater doesn't work very well, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? There's an afghan in the back. Thank you. I'm not cold. You know, I tried to think of everything. I so wanted this to be a pleasant trip, but the weather isn't cooperating, is it? This time of year, I suppose we should be grateful it's not a snowstorm. I haven't put the chains in the trunk of this old jalopy yet. I've been so wrapped up in my work, I've lost all track of time. Your work? Yes, I guess you've forgotten. I'm a sculptor. For this past month, I've been working on something terribly exciting. It's, well, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever done. That is, it will be when it's finished. I am so anxious for you to see it. Is that why you kidnapped me? I do wish you'd stop using that word. It, it sounds so villainous. I mean, it makes me feel like a common criminal. Well, aren't you? Hardly. I'm afraid I've never been common anything. There wasn't time. As an artist, my life has been devoted solely to the quest for beauty. A beauty that is as timeless as love. Did you know that true beauty, like true love, is a vision of the eternal? You see, Lydia, there are other planes, other dimensions of existence. If we don't fear them, they reveal themselves to us just as your spirit has revealed itself to me. I... I don't understand any of this. Well, perhaps you will when we get to the farmhouse. Mm, we're almost out of gas. There's a station around the next bend. Yes, there it is. Afternoon. Help you, mister? Yes, uh, fill it up, please, regular. Yep, winter's coming all right. She's been pouring down like this most all day. Don't look like she wants to let up, neither. Your folks come far? Uh, we're driving up from the city. City folks, eh? Yeah, don't get down to the city much myself. The wife and I, we make a trip into Hartford about once a year before Christmas. Wife likes to shop in them fancy stores for the grandkids. You know them stores, ma'am? No. No, I, I don't. You, uh... You're feeling all right, ma'am? You look kind of pale. Yes, I, I... I'm fine. Alex, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to the restroom. Can't I wait till we get home. You said I should trust you. Can't you trust me? I want to, Lydia. Can you tell me where your ladies' room is, please? Right round back, ma'am. You can't miss it. Better run, though, or you'll be soaked clear through. <laughs> ah, women. They're all alike, eh, mister? Mm. Can't go to a gas station without paying a visit to the ladies. <laughs> Get me the police and hurry. What city, please? I don't care. Any city. There are a lot of police stations in Connecticut, ma'am. I have to know which one you want. But I don't know. Are you calling on a payphone, ma'am? Yes, yes, I am. Then look on the phone book. It should tell you what city is closest to you. Phone book? Yes, here it is. New Milford. It's New Milford. Thank you. One moment, please. I'll connect you. Please hurry. New Milford Police, McConnell speaking. I'll take that phone, Hello. young lady. Anybody there? I did want to trust you, Lydia. The journey resumed in silence. I slumped down in the seat, my forehead pressed against the cold window. I stared out at the gray, rain-swollen sky, 
the bleak November landscape flashing by. My mind and body were drained. I was unable to struggle further against a force I couldn't understand. Enveloped by a sense of foreboding, I awaited my fate as the car moved northward through the rain toward... toward what? Late that afternoon, the car finally turned off the main highway onto a narrow dirt road surrounded by dense woods. We're almost home, Lydia. About three miles further on, we came to a clearing. There on a knoll set back from the road, beneath the protective branches of two ancient elm trees, stood the farmhouse. As the car arrived in front of the house, the rain suddenly stopped and the sun broke through the clouds. Vapors of steam curled upward from the roof toward the brightening sky. The house glistened like a memory. Here we are. Come. Come on. Get out of the car, Lydia. The house. Everything. It's all just as it used to be. Do come and have a look around. Uh, yes. All right. For the moment, I forgot my fear in my joy at seeing again my beloved childhood home. I wandered over the property, fond memories returning as I rediscovered familiar places. It was as if I never left. There was the vegetable garden all tilled and ready for winter. And the apple orchard, even the old ladder, resting against the same crooked tree. But the biggest surprise was my swing. I ran toward it as eagerly as if I were greeting an old friend. How I used to love that swing. I'd sit for hours just swinging back and forth, looking out over the trees across the road dreaming of the places I was going to go, the people I'd meet someday. Sometimes I'd see a storm coming way off. Then suddenly it would be there and I'd run for dear life to the potting shed. The potting shed? I wondered if it was still there behind the house. There it was, unchanged. I pulled open the rickety door and went inside. Ah, here oh, you are. I, I was just looking around. Of course you were. There's so much to see, isn't there? Yes. It's all so familiar. I know. It's just as you remembered it. Exactly. It's all exactly the same. I, I can't believe it. Believe it, Lydia. It's as real as you or me. But I still don't understand. Why have you brought me here? You'll know soon enough. It's not something I can tell you. You must discover it for yourself. Now, let's go inside. I have a surprise for you. What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears with a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in buttonholer, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95, and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore, solid as Sears. Here comes spring. I know. Isn't the weather lovely? I'm talking about your dress. It's as soft and breezy as spring. Soft dressing is what spring is all about. And her dress is from Sears' expressive collection of dresses and skirt sets. Fluid lines and feminine designs. Fine detailing to shape and define in fabrics that move with you. Polyester or polyester and silk in subtle spring shades for quiet excitement. And this is petite and half sizes in the dress department at most larger Sears retail stores. Put together a whole wardrobe with the classic collection separates at Sears. Now you can buy the pants to a suit, the vest to a suit, and the jacket to a suit separately. So every well-tailored piece of the outfit you buy is geared to your size and build. You can create a more casual look with solid color blazers and patterned slacks, or patterned sport coats and solid color slacks. The colors coordinate to let you mix and match. Now that's style, sense, and satisfaction. The classic collection at most larger Sears retail stores.
Vincent Price again, and here's the concluding act of Going Home. We entered the house through the kitchen. As the door closed behind me, I was plunged further into a world which, unlike Alice's Wonderland, was uncanny in its familiarity. It was as if the past 20 years never existed, and I was once again a child of 10. The kitchen was my favorite room, always so warm and cozy. What good times we had there. The huge stone fireplace, the Dutch oven, the yellow-dotted Swiss curtains at the window. On the table was a wooden bowl that looked like the one Mother kept filled with fruit. Only now it held red pomegranates. How does it look to you? It hasn't changed. It's a wonderful room, don't you think? There's so much of you in it. I feel as if I'm dreaming. As though any minute I'll wake up and I'll be back in my apartment and none of this will have ever happened. You're not dreaming, Lydia. But this... This can't all be real. I assure you it is. Now, come along. I want you to see the rest of the house. This is incredible. The living room, it's... It's the same, even the furniture. Where did you get this furniture? It was here when I bought the place. But it looks so new. Yes, it does look nice, doesn't it? This furniture belonged to my family. I know. You know? How could you know? I just know. Everything was in exactly the same place. The dining table, the couch under the window, the cobbler's bench Papa bought for a coffee table, and my mother's rocking chair. Yes, I like that chair myself. It's quite pleasant to sit there in the evening and read. But... How did you know? Know what? How did you know where everything went? I told you. I just know. That clock. Where did you get it? Which one? The one that just chimed. There on the mantelpiece. Oh, that one. A beauty, isn't it? That clock belonged to my great-grandmother. I'm sure my parents took it with them when they sold the house. Why is it here? Please, Lydia, no more questions. Uh, there seems to be a chill in the house. I'll, I'll make a fire. Thoughtless of me. I, I should have warmed the house while you were outside looking around. Yes, would have been nice and warm by now. Please, won't you tell me what this is all about? What do you want with me? Nothing. I want nothing. And why? Why what? Why have you brought me here? You mustn't try so hard to understand. Some things can't be explained. They... They just happen. Happen? Yes. As I told you in the car, there exists a dimension other than the one we're accustomed to. Some people would call it supernatural. But I dislike that word. I prefer to think of it as a spiritual thing. Not in the religious, but in the mystical sense. Mystical? Yes. Something that can't be explained rationally or scientifically. Like spirits? Precisely. Ah, now that's better. Do come and warm yourself, Lydia. When... When does my spirit appear to you? Different times. Most often while I'm working. It has to do with creativity. It makes one more receptive to other levels of awareness. Other levels of... Awareness, yes. Look, it's very simple, really. Like being tuned in to a different radio station. Has anyone else ever seen this spirit? No. Even if there were others here, chances are they wouldn't notice anything unusual not being tuned in properly. One has to be on the right frequency to glimpse the world beyond. Beyond? That means beyond life, doesn't it? That's right. That's what I don't understand. How can there be a spirit if the person isn't dead? Would you like some tea? I would. I'll go put the kettle on. Won't be a minute. Do get closer to the fire, Lydia. You look chilled to the bone. Lydia? Lydia, where are you? Lydia. Lydia. Ah, 
here you are. I'm afraid it's locked with you. The front door is never used. Now, come and have some tea. Feeling better? A cup of tea is soothing, isn't it? Now, if you come with me, there's something I want to show you. I... I'd rather just sit here by the fire, if you don't mind. Please, Lydia, this is very important. Come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. Please, I'd rather stay here. You must learn to trust me. Now, come along. It's in the cellar. In the cellar? Yes. Follow me. I'll, I'll take your hand if you like. No, no, I'll come. There's my girl. I really must get oil on this door. Keep forgetting. Ah, there it goes. Mind your step now. These stairs are a bit steep. It's dark. I can't see. Your eyes will adjust in a moment. There's a light switch down at the bottom. It's so cold. There. Let there be light. You see now? What's that? That thing with the cloth over it. That's my surprise. Come closer, Lydia. Come stand where you can see when I take the cover off. There, that's right. Are you ready? Yes, I guess so. Mind, it's not quite finished yet. The cloth floated to the floor, revealing the surprise. It was a marble figure of a woman. She was delicate and graceful, with a translucency of alabaster. She looked like a Greek statue, and yet something about her was strangely contemporary. Well, what do you think? She's... she's beautiful. I knew you'd like her. When she's finished, she'll be my most exquisite creation. Tell me, do you recognize her? I... I don't think so. Now, look carefully. It can't be me. How could you have known? But, but, but she's so, so beautiful. That's how I see you, Lydia. As the lovely Persephone. Persephone? The loveliest of goddesses. Not even Aphrodite could hold a candle to, to either of you. Lydia, would you be kind enough to do me a favor... What is it? Would you pose for me? There's one area that's giving me trouble around the eyes. Your eyes were never quite clear when you appeared before. If you... You just stand right where you are and... Tilt your head a little bit to the left. Oh, that, 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 that's it. That's it. Good. Now, this will only take a moment or two. There's a... A poem by D.H. Lawrence. Let me see if I can remember how it goes. Let me... Let me guide myself with the torch of a flower down the darker and darker stairs, down the way Persephone goes, just now in first frosted November. Hmm. Appropriate, don't you think? I... I don't know. There. Ah, oh, I think I've got the essence. She, she just needs some refining to live up to her model. You, you can move now. And if you'll excuse me, I, I must continue working if I'm to finish today. Why don't you go upstairs and have a look at your room? My room? Yes, it's right where it was. Just up the stairs and to the left. Oh, and Lydia. Yes? Do forget about trying to escape. It's not possible. <laughs> in a state of shock after the day's bizarre events, I left the dank enigma of the cellar. As if drawn by a magnet, I climbed the stairs to the second floor. I walked down the hallway to where my room used to be, then hesitated, unsure of what I might find inside. I took a deep breath and opened the door. It was incredible. The room was just the way I left it over 20 years before. I stood there in the doorway and gazed into the past. 
there was my white canopy bed. My dresser. My stuffed animal collection on the blue chair in the corner. Even my treasured copy of Black Beauty on the little pine desk Papa made for me. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought I must be losing my mind. First, I couldn't remember how I ended up in the hospital. And now... Now this. I wonder where that came from. I went to the window and parted the organdy curtains. Below, in the gathering darkness, I could barely make out the dim forms. Then I saw... There, on the road... Sitting in a cart being pulled by a black pony was a little girl wearing a, a big straw hat. My God! That's me! That little girl is me! I was suddenly seized by a cold panic. Its icy fingers gripped my skull like a vice. I had to get out of there. I ran out of the room and down the stairs as quietly as I could. Lydia? Oh, <laughs> forgive me. I, I, I didn't mean to startle you. Please! I must get back to the city. I must go! I'm sorry, but you can't leave. Not anymore. Your return has already been delayed. It's almost a month overdue. What do you mean, overdue? Since the accident. The accident? Yes, dear Lydia. And now you've come home. At last, you've come home to stay. <laughs> I remember I was walking down the street Lexington I think it was yes I remember now I just bought that lavender dress suppose when we die we do continue to exist in another dimension the world beyond is imagined in many ways, not all of them pleasant. Is our fate the dark nether world of Pluto and Persephone? Or could it be that we are destined to return to the time and to the place of our fondest memories? Words out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Clinging jerseys, tight satin tops, they only look good if they hug your body smoothly. Sears Best All Bra Light helps you and your clothes look good. How? All Bra Light has no seam cups and straps adjust in the back so you look great up front. Whatever you do, whether it's dashing around town or simmering with disco fever in that slinky dress, it's flattering fun with the Sears All Bra Light. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Wherever in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine, wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears tough skins. The toughest jeans in Sears tough jeans territory. Fashioned from a perma press pry blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears tough skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops. Going Home was written by Ann Heath, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Ann Given and Jack Crucian. Also heard were Vic Perrin, Joan McCall, Bill Zuckert, and Jack Manning. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The 
Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. 1004, 1003, 1002. It's time to improve your home's looks with beautiful vinyl siding from National Sales. We now have $5 billion allotted for vinyl siding loans to improve your home. We'll put vinyl siding on your home regardless of good credit, bad credit, repossessions, no credit, single, divorced. It doesn't matter as long as you have a job or other income and you're buying or own your own home. So call right now, 238-7186. We have operators standing by right now to take your call. Dial 238-7186. That's 238-7186. This siding carries a four. 40-year warranty, so don't wait. Call today, and we'll have someone out there tonight. 238-7186. Remember, we have guaranteed financing. That number again is 238-7186. Out of town, call, collect, area code 214-238-7186. Television programming is getting better and better. Every day you see brilliant specials, outstanding dramas, hilarious comedies, and the most outstanding sports coverage worldwide. Wouldn't it be great to watch your favorite programming on your own giant screen TV? From Visual Encounters, who feature Munts TV. Munts was the pioneer in the manufacture of the giant screen television, and they're now pioneering the lowest price. Only $13.95 complete. Call Visual Encounters at 361-9220 or go by their showroom at 5988 Northwest Highway in Preston Center. Munts giant screen televisions offer the brightest picture on the market. Visual Encounters also features the lowest prices on your favorite videotape recorders. Don't miss a single moment of magnificent, thrilling TV. Go by Visual Encounters in Preston Center or call 361-9220. That's 361-9220. Visual Encounters. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your host. Let's listen. A ring would look, look wonderful on this finger. Clam, you shouldn't say that. Say what? You shouldn't say that about a ring. You shouldn't ever say things like that unless you mean it. I mean it. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater. Slide into the 1979 baseball season with Ranger Reports each weekday from veteran pitcher Ferguson Jenkins. Fergie will talk about the games coming up, what kind of competition the Rangers will be up against, and the kind of competition the Rangers have to offer this season. Listen for the Ranger Report with Ferguson Jenkins starting March 26th, Monday through Friday at 8.15 a.m. and 5.45 p.m. Exclusively on WFAA News Talk 57. There's a new program here at WFAA News Talk 57. It's called Texas Daybreak. I'm Jess Smith, and I'm up early every Monday through Friday to host the program between 5 a.m. and 6. Bill Blanchard keeps us updated on the latest morning news. We spend a lot of time on the weather, and Joe Halstead spends a few tall tales and Texas short stories. 5 a.m. to 6, Monday through Friday, Texas Daybreak. A good way to start the day from WFAA News Talk 57. I'm Charles Osgood, CBS News, inviting you to get a head start on the morning news with Dick Wheeler and all the news people here on WFAA. Dallas, Fort Worth. CBS News. A swell of bipartisan support for President Carter for his achievement in the Middle East. I'm Rita Sands reporting on the CBS radio network. Unless new problems develop, Egypt and Israel could sign a long-awaited peace treaty within two weeks. Their defense ministers will arrive in Washington this week to work out final details. There'll be a review of U.S. military commitments, which play an important role in the treaty. Pentagon sources say the estimated $4 billion in military aid to be spread over three or four years will be almost equally divided between Israel and Egypt. Key congressional leaders say it will be money well spent. Former President Richard Nixon agrees. While peace cannot be purchased uh, by dollars alone, and no one should ever make that fatal mistake. Uh, if by an expenditure of money uh, we can strengthen the foundation of peace uh, which exists, uh, 